Do you know flags and fireworks will fill the air here next week as cities across France celebrate the July 14th national holiday known as Bastille Day. Now, Bastille Day commemorates a pivotal moment in the early French Revolution. And to tell us a bit more about how that transformed the urban landscape of Paris is Dr. Stephanie Nadalo, a historian and guide for Paris Muse. Stephanie, Thank hello. You. hello. Thank you so much uh, for coming in to talk to us about this. Now, first of all, what exactly was the Bastille of Bastille Day and how does that relate to the French Revolution? So the Bastille began as a medieval fortress built in the 14th century by the French King Charles V. Now initially, its primary function was to defend the eastern extremity of Paris. However, it was also used as a prison. And over the years, the dungeons of the Bastille acquired a very nasty reputation. Now, by the summer of 1789, the worst parts of the prison weren't being used any longer, but it was still very unpopular, particularly due to the detainment of political prisoners. So on July 14th, 1789, roughly 900 French civilians took up arms and risked their lives in order to besiege the fortified structure. But why did the revolutionaries so desperately want to get inside? Well, Jeannie, their goals were both symbolic and very practical. Um, by that summer, you have to imagine that France was a political tinderbox. Members of the Third Estate, essentially the commoners, had recently broken off and declared themselves to be a national assembly. And this political move did not please the King of France, Louis XVI, in Versailles. And so he orders royal troops to encircle Paris. Now, at this point, the Parisians are feeling very nervous. And on the morning of July 14th, um, a crowd storms into the École Militaire and they gather up weapons. They then go in search of ammunition, and rumors had spread that there were stockpiles of gunpowder housed in the Bastille. All right, so then they tried to force their way into the prison to get those arms. Exactly, and they managed to do so with the help of defectors from the king's royal army, known as the Garde Française. Mm -hmm. They forced the governor of the Bastille to surrender. Now, when the revolutionaries finally get inside, they only discover a handful of prisoners. However, they quickly capitalize on the symbolic value of this victory. And just two days later, they begin to demolish the structure stone by stone. And they did demolish it to a point where today, if I'm correct, at the Place de la Bastille, we can hardly see anything of this medieval fortress. In fact, so very little remains of that original structure. There are a couple stones um, that are still visible underground if you walk along the platform of Metro Line 5. And above ground, there's a couple red paving stones in the road that kind of indicate the outline of the Bastille. But Ultimately, if you really want to immerse yourself in the French Revolution, I highly recommend a visit to the Carnivalet Museum in Paris. Here you can see a really unique collection of Revolution-era artifacts, including paintings, ceramics, even a model of the Bastille that was carved from the original stones of the demolished structure. Now, Stephanie, just as you were speaking, we saw this large monument that's at the heart of the Place de la Bastille. So what does that commemorate? Absolutely. There is a huge bronze column in the very center of that plaza, but this actually commemorates a later revolution known as the July Revolution of 1830. It's also sometimes called the Three Glorious Days of the 27th. 27th, 28th, and 29th of July. Now, we often talk about the French Revolution, but we really need to remember there's a lot of French revolutions that um, shaped French history. And these were interspersed by periods of Napoleonic rule and also the Restoration, when the kings of France came back. So in 1830, this July Revolution is when the people of Paris fought at the barricades in order to depose the very last Bourbon monarch, King Charles X. They instead install his cousin, the Duc d'Orléans, um, to rule as a constitutional monarch. Now, in 1830, there was a lot of hope that this new king would rule differently because members of his family had previously supported the first French Revolution. And it's actually that king, Louis-Philippe, who erected that giant column in the center of the plaza. So are there any other links between these two revolutions, uh, revolution 1789 and the revolution of 1830? Absolutely. Um, many symbols that were first popular during the first French Revolution came back in 1830. These include, of course, the French tricolor flag, the flag, the flag of France today, um, and also the figure of Lady Liberty, also known as Marianne. Um, now, we see images of Marianne all over Paris today. We see her in sculptures, on postage stamps. We also see her <laughs> in the beautiful painting that hangs in the Louvre. Um, entitled Liberty Leading the People. Now, this iconic image was created in the months right after the French Revolution. Um, and it was created by the artist Delacroix. And in creating this painting, um, 
He's both reviving symbols from the first French Revolution, but he also updates them in order to fit a more contemporary setting. Now, years later, the great um, author, French author Victor Hugo, would also commemorate the events of the 1830s in his very popular novel, Les Miserables, which we all know is then made into a play and a popular musical. And so today, it's thanks to masterpieces like these that we too can celebrate the spirit of the French Revolution all year long. Oh, it's fantastic. Thank you so much, Stephanie Nadalo, for that Thank explanation you. a bit of what's behind the infamous Bastille Day, which is next Tuesday, July 14th. Stephanie Nadalo from Paris Muse, thank you very much for coming in to talk to us. And if you want to get more information on tours that Stephanie gives or any of the other guides, you can always check it out on their website, parismuse.com. All right.